What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Sand Sports Talk Podcast. We have a special edition. This is going to be a podcast that drops every Thursday with the new guys, Hattie and Ben. We're going to do a soccer podcast every single week. This is the first edition on season four. Here we go. Let's get it. Hattie, Ben, what's going on, fellas? Welcome to the channel. Hope everybody's well. How we doing, boys? Good. What's good? What's up, guys? I don't. Ben has already made his official like podcast debut per se, but Hattie's back. We did a video on the channel a little bit ago talking about potential transfer targets for some of the big six clubs. If you guys have not seen that, I'm going to drop that in the description. You guys can watch that video. Some of these guys that we talked about already got signed for their respective clubs. So we're going to start today. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about transfers who the winners and losers of the transfer market have been so far during this summer period of 2021 and then we're going to get into a prediction Premier league for the table 2021 a prediction for the table we're going to start with the transfers let's start we're going to do uh, we're going to do winners and losers of the table let's start with the winners I, I would like to talk about the winners first guys who wants to go first give me a winner of the transfer window let's go oh, what we got yeah, i want to hear what she what he's got cooking over there. What you got, man? Uh, Sam, you're going to like this one. I got Man U as my winner for the transfer window. Uh, I think with the, the key for them is keeping their team together and then adding in Varan, Sancho, and then possibly Boateng. I don't know if you saw that, but getting a free chance for Boateng would be huge for this team as a backup center back. And also getting a new CDM, that's the last thing. But what they've done so far in the transfer window, I think has been the best of the league. Okay. Yep. I, I don't know. I, I don't think the Boateng thing is going anywhere. Actually, I saw Fob tweet yesterday that it's not really a thing that's going to happen. I prefer to look for a center defensive midfielder. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was my winner too. Obviously, I don't know if you want to call it bias or whatever it is, but if this team can sign a center defensive midfielder, we're talking about the likes of Camavinga. Salo's name has really been thrown around the past couple of days. I don't really see him as a holder, as a, as a strictly defensive mid, because that's what Ali wants to play next season is a 4 3 3 with a, a sitting defensive midfielder. I don't know if mm -hmm. Salo can work in that system. I don't even know if Camavinga can work in that system per se. I want him to. But somebody, like, need to find – like, if Declan Rice wasn't 100 mil, I would love it. But, you know, that's a completely different story. But, yeah, I 100% the winners, you get a guy like Jaden Sancho at 70 and then Varane at, you know, we're not really sure what the price is. It's between 40 and 50. The crazy thing with Manchester United during this window is, is they were quoted last summer 120 for Jaden Sancho, and they get Sancho and Varane for possibly lower than that quoted price. I think that's fantastic business by the club. And like I said, if they sign a DM, I think it's a perfect sum. Yeah, that that price for that price for Varane is big, especially when you compare it to how much Arsenal just paid for Ben White. Right. Obviously, there are reasons for that in terms of the contract. Uh, ben White's homegrown, a little younger, but when you look at the the quality that Varane has, bringing in a player like that for that price is pretty big, especially the experience he has, the Champions League, all these big games, it is big. Uh, I was honestly close to picking United as my as my winners, <laughs> but I I haven't seen any concrete links to a that pure number six, that pure defensive midfielder. So that's why I couldn't pick him because I, I honestly think that was even more important of a signing for them than a center back. I agree. I yeah. think that's, it's absolutely pivotal for United. So um, I actually really love the pick that I went with. I've chose Leicester as my winner so far. Um, they signed Pat Daka up front mm -hmm. from Bobby Salzburg and they got uh, Bobby Samare from, I believe it was Lil. And then yeah. they also signed Ryan Bertrand on a free from Southampton. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's really good fullback cover for them, especially because the big injuries that they've had at fullback recently. Castagna, Ricardo Pereira is coming back from um, an ACL injury. I believe it was recent. So I think Leicester are, those are some really good signings. I mean, those two, Samare and Daka are two really young guys that are like, they were, they were big. Like they were one of the big young players in Europe, sought out by a lot of big clubs. And the fact that a team like Leicester can, um, can get a players like that, I think that's really big for them. And that provides them with a lot of cover. The only thing I, I think actually had them like back. That's it. That's all I'll say. Yeah, I had them as my third for transfer win, uh, for transfer winners. So I know you guys didn't do top three, but I had them as three. So I definitely agree with all those. Dawkins, why are huge? I'm curious about your second. You guys might not like this. Now, I'm going with my boys, Arsenal. I think the main <laughs> point here is the mindset was right. We knew we had to get the young players and build to, to win the future. We can't win now. We know that. So signing in, getting Lakonga, 21 years old, huge. That was big for us. We need another DM along with uh, Thomas Partey. Getting Ben White, I don't like the price tag at all. I've already said that both to you guys. Uh, but, I mean, he is the player we need. Young center back along with Gabriel. 
uh, and I said this in the transfer video, the average age for Arsenal is now 22. That is so, great. which is great. Yeah. We, we yeah. can keep this team together for seven years and they'll all be in their prime in seven years. Yeah. My, my older it's brother is uh, an Arsenal fan, and I'll tell you what, all he ever says, all he ever says is youth, 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 youth. Just play the young yeah. player. Yeah, at this point, we're not winning now. We're looking to the future. He's like, just play the young guys, give them experience, buy young players. That's all he says. I would have went with Arsenal. I like the signings, but the, it's just the price tags. I think, yeah. especially in this day and age with COVID and everything, how it's impacted all these clubs, I think paying that much money for players like Ben White and then, you know, Ramsdale's, you know, whatever's going to happen with that, um, a lot of money for a keeper of low quality to me. Um, yeah. Back up to Leno, but I don't think he's he's solving any problems there. And that's a lot of money down the drain, in my opinion, for Arsenal. But not my money, so I don't care. Yeah, I'm, right. Man, and we I'm, didn't sell anyone either. We didn't get rid of Xhaka. He's going to stay at the club. Bellerin hasn't gone anywhere yet. So we're just spending this money, and we're still paying. I'm not sure how many years are left on this. But the deal with Pepe that we did with Leo, I think it was three years ago, we were paying $18 million a year. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we're still paying that right now. So it's a four-year. It was a five-year, five 18 million. Five-year. Yeah. Wow. And that's why the financial stuff concerns me. Also, for me, when I look at Arsenal, the biggest position they need, the biggest signing they absolutely need is right back. 100%, in yeah. my opinion. And I think most Arsenal fans would agree with that. And they haven't – I haven't even seen a concrete link to any right backs yet. To be and fair, full back market isn't exactly, you know, anything crazy. When you think of like, oh, what right back do I want? You know, it's like kind of hard to decide. Mm-hmm. But you haven't seen anything. So, I don't know. I, that's why I like Arsenal. There's billions of left backs too. We just got Noon Tavares, another left back who was yeah. pretty good. He's 18 years old. Um, yeah. So what, what are we going to do with him? He's going to be he's just going to be behind Tierney. Yeah, Gary yeah, yeah, Richard Tierney. No way. Yeah, he, needed no. A, he needed a backup left back, but he's quality. He's a guy that should be you know starting for the Leicester kind of team. You know. I, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Good signing, but. Uh, yeah, I don't really understand the. I don't. I really don't get the the Ramsdale links. Is there any like real meaning behind that? We just got this new keeper, Runerson, last year, um, who's, who's a young keeper that I thought we were going to develop, but, I mean, I guess not. Now you're just going to show him money out to Rams. Just, I don't, I don't understand so that one at no. all. And we, and we just got rid of Emmy Martinez last year for less than we're going to pay for Ramsdale. Right, and Emmy Martinez is fantastic. Yeah, and you got rid fantastic. of Matt Ryan as well, right? Matt Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's done. Well, Matt yeah, Ryan was there for half a season. Yeah, that was yeah. about so, it. He played by twice. Right. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, I look, I look at the Ben White thing, and you, you know, you, you want to talk about the price tag a lot, but I also like compare that to the Harry Maguire thing. Like, yeah. Harry Maguire's not, it was never 80 million, no, was no. never worth that kind of yeah. money. And realistically, neither was Ben White. And Harry Maguire is still not worth 80 mil whatsoever. He's, yeah. He's so but he's great. I think Harry Maguire is great. He was great in the Euros. He was, he was great for us last season. He's the club captain now, which is ridiculous. But maybe you could see, you know, Ben White is going to be good for the side. I'm not going to downplay how good Ben White is, but just the 50 million, it's a little bit concerning to look at like where that money's going. He's, he's definitely just not worth that much money. Yeah. So when you compare it to United signing a Varane. Right. Yeah. So, that, but that's, you wouldn't look at it as, but it, even if you look at Varane and Maguire, like Varane is 45 and Maguire is 80, like you're, you're not, you're not comparing it to because it's not the same summer. Well, we're just looking at it now because it's Ben White in the same summer. Yeah. So, Sam, I got a question for you then. Go ahead. So if you're comparing this to Ben White, I'm just trying to think, going back to when you did get Maguire, do you regret that decision to get Maguire then, if he's not worth $80 at, million now? At the time? Looking back on what you know of how he played, do you regret getting Maguire? No, not at all. Okay. So you think – so then, in my opinion, that does mean that he's worth $80 million if you don't regret getting it. No, I, I, I think he was, I don't think he was worth eighty million. I don't regret the fact that we got Harry Maguire because he's been great for us. But okay. I think the eighty million is was a little much. <laughs> if we would have spent fifty mil on Harry Maguire, I would have understood it. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. But like when you look at the eighty mil off rip, I mean, we needed a center back so bad. We, our, our center back, we had Phil Jones as like third choice. So at that point, we had to pick somebody up. I, I, I liked him coming into the club, not for 80 mil. I know that you like Ben White coming into the club, but not for 50 mil. So it's kind yeah. of the same situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ben White, but Ben White is 23. So, you, I mean, you've got yeah. to justify his price tag. That's a big thing. Right. For sure. I mean, you guys want to move on to the losers? I mean. Yeah. My loser might surprise you guys a little bit. Hattie, you're probably going to be upset. I got Liverpool as a loser. No way. I, I, I have Liverpool as a loser. I'm blaming you. 
I have no clue as a loser. I feel like they had to come into the summer and do so much. They had to come into the summer and do so much. I think Bobby Firmino is not good enough for this club anymore. He had a really bad season last season. I, I love the Kanate sign. Do not get me wrong. I love the Kanate signing. I just feel like they could have done so much more with this summer. You saw when Adam leave with no virtual replacement of him. I know his playing time was like very in and out last season because of the midfield depth that they have. However, I feel like there should have been a replacement at, you know, at that point. I mean, Mane was not great last season. I'm not saying you sell Mane, you get rid of Mane, but I just feel like they, they should have done way more in this summer. Obviously we still have some time left so they could completely change that up. Love the Kanate signing, but I feel like they could have done so much more in this window. Yeah. That's, that's my big thing with Liverpool though is, it's always it's, the signings always do come late though. That is one big yeah. thing. So I I do have a little bit of faith, but you you know how I feel about FSG, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> FSG. <five of> them. <laughs> so uh, I I don't have much faith, but there is a part of me that's like ah, uh, you know, maybe something's gonna come up. We do tend to do transfers very quiet. Like if you if you've even seen Fabrizio, even when on his podcast, sometimes he goes, he's like, I don't know what Liverpool's doing. Right. And yeah. Can say about that about any other club. He's like, mm. I do not know what Liverpool are doing. So um. I don't know. I, I mean, we made one signing so far, which is ridiculous. Honestly, I think it's so stupid. Uh, we need. I think we need a backup right back, a midfielder, and at least one forward, if not a striker and a winger. But I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, we've been we've been linked. We were linked with Saul a little bit, and then those faded away. We were linked with uh, Basuma, and then that faded away. We were linked with uh, who was it? I think it was Barella and Locatelli. That's all faded away. Yeah. I, at this point, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I do not know what this club is planning. I right, have yeah. absolutely no idea. So I cannot blame you guys for picking us as the losers so far. But we still have time. I still don't have faith. Yeah, the other side, that's the big thing. I mean, you guys could make a move in the next two weeks and this could all change everything. Back up right back is another thing you were talking about. Need need more than one. Need. Yeah. Need more than one. Yeah, for sure. And we'll see. I mean, I don't. I'm not totally optimistic that that's going to happen in the next two weeks. I think it's really yeah. tough, but yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's why, who do you guys have as your losers? Cause that's my loser. How do you can go first? Um, this is a little bit of a weird one. I don't, I don't think either of you even probably thought of them, but I'm going to go with West Ham here. I haven't, the season that West Ham had last, last year was amazing. I mean, they were competing for Champions League football up until mm -hmm. the last two, three weeks. I mean, they were doing really well under David Moyes. And what have you heard about them? Have you heard any good signings that West Ham have made so Not far? Not at all, nothing. At all. Yeah. I don't even think they haven't even brought Jesse Lingard back. Right. I, I don't know what's got. I mean, to be to be fair, I haven't done too much research into West Ham yet, like this summer. But I haven't heard a single thing from that mm -hmm. camp. When you have a season like that, you got to build on it. Have to have to absolutely build on it. You have to make some signings in the, the you know the weak areas. Um, I think they lost they lost Felipe Anderson. They're, they're, and this is another thing. We're, we're the ones being linked to Jared Bowen now. If they lose a player like Jared Bowen, it's kind of going to screw them. That's a weird one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's a weird I, one. I, I haven't heard much about West Ham. For me, personally, I just feel like when a team like West Ham, you know, your West Ham's, your Everton's, your Crystal Palace, you know, Southampton, all those kind of guys. When you have a big season where you finish that high up, you have to build on it. Right. Especially if I'm a Liverpool fan, you know, we won the Champions League, didn't build on it. Won the Premier League, didn't build on it. And, and you've seen what's happened with us, you know, you, when you have, when those big things, when you have those successful seasons, you have to build on it. You have mm -hmm. to make signings and keep the momentum going or else I, and we'll see later when we do our table predictions, what I think about West Ham. So. <laughs> I think a big thing for them is definitely bringing back Jesse Lingard. I think that's, that's probably going to happen. I don't, I don't yeah. see us hanging on to Jesse Lingard. I think that's probably going to happen. That's, that's probably their biggest piece of business that they, kind of need to get done at this point yeah. you know they have a bunch of guys that are quoted a crazy amount right now when you talk about you know we talked about rice already you talk about Suchek, whose value has skyrocketed this summer yeah. after the season he had last season i think if they bring back jesse lingard maybe they could duplicate what they did last season but we'll see i i my table is a little bit weird with them as well so because i don't really know what to expect out yeah and if you yeah and it uh also a huge factor in their transfer windows whether they keep rice or not i mean he's, he's their club captain. right yeah not like you're just losing a good young player he's also your captain so losing a player like that's going to be huge for them um and yeah. i don't I, I don't i can't remember any big west ham signings in the last like five ten years no. you know, mm -hmm. so you don't have much faith in them making a big signing that's going to help them really right so i think west ham are going to go into next season and their fans are going to be real disappointed i think i agree on top of the rice departure i think that's big because the Suchek Rice partnership is something that you don't see very often from really good all. The two DMs is something that no other team plays, and that's why it's hard to play against West Ham. So you take Rice out of that, 
they become a just a completely average team with nothing special about them. And then on paper, they're not good either. They're just mm-hmm. decent, they're just average. Yeah, so I definitely agree with that. And yeah, and, R- and Rice sitting allows Susek to get in the box and get those goals that he's right. yeah. made his name about. Mm-hmm. So if they look at a player like Rice, I mean, you need a like for like switch right there if you want to keep the same tactics from last season. And I just don't see it happening, to be honest. Which is really tough to find. Right. It's really tough to find. Oh, yeah. And it's oh, really tough to find. Like yeah. Indian- As Man U is experiencing yeah. right now. That's what I'm saying. It's it's really tough to find. If we, if we had a like for like comparison, we would take that guy 10, 10 times out of 10, but you yeah. can't find him right now. It's tough. Exactly. Ben, who are you? All right. So for my loser, I said Newcastle, and it's a boring pick, but they just stink. Like, they did nothing. (laughs) Their one bright spot was Joe Willick going over from Arsenal and having a decent loan spell. He's back at Arsenal. They didn't get him. They they literally signed no one. I don't know what they expect this team to do, uh, but they're just going to be terrible. Yeah, Yeah, that's about it. It's a boring pick, but. Um, when you're this bad and you do nothing, you're going to get demoted. Yeah, I mean, I agree with it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Obviously, we, we, <laughs> I don't know many Newcastle fans ourselves. No. Um, but, you know, when I do look on Twitter and stuff, I they absolutely hate their owners. They absolutely hate them. They never invest in the squad. Um, I forget the name of their owners. Something to Ashley. Maybe Mike Ashley. Um, someone like that. But they, I, they do not like their owners at all. And I can't blame them because they never spend. And Newcastle is a big club. In terms of just size of the club, Newcastle is a big club. I mean, they they have the fans, they have the fan base, they have the money. They just don't do anything with it. I don't understand it. They're kind of like a Leeds. Like Leeds has always been. Yeah. A mm-hmm. They just they just need to build on it. I don't understand it. I mean, their stadium's big. They got the fan base. They got the money. There's no reason for them not to be spending and you know trying to build that squad. I remember they were getting linked to those Arab owners that one season. We thought they were going to be the richest team in the world, and then I don't know what happened to that. Oh, that was last year. Yeah, they were talking about buying Mbappe and all that shit. That was yeah, ridiculous. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on over there at Newcastle, but so here's a stat for you guys comparing to Newcastle. Joe Willock went mid February to the team. He is their second highest goal scorer for last season with eight goals. That's their insane, next highest, man. the third highest, is Almiron with four. Yeah, they have Colin Wilson who had twelve goals, four of them being PKs. Then Joe Willock with eight, who came mid February. And yeah. then four is their next highest. You're not scoring goals. Your defense isn't anything. Oh, I just don't see how this team. I just don't see how this team stays up when the twelve top teams in the Premier League are so good this year. Right. Why are you not resigning them? It it's a great question. Yeah. Because Arsenal, they haven't been too keen on him. We haven't. We haven't shown him any interest, really. No, they're not playing him. No, not Arsenal at all. Especially with well. ESR. No. And I don't understand why Arsenal don't keep him as a as some depth in midfield. I don't. I, I don't get that either. Right, yeah, I agree. A player to be a depth player there. I mean, you know, give him a chance at least. He just proved he was a good player. I knew. Yeah. Well, I don't know. A lot of these young players, man, I feel bad. They, they have these great seasons, and then boom, nothing happens from it. Shout out. It's, you get bigger players. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of <laughs> All right, so let's let's move on to the table. Let's move on to the table. Let's start with the relegation battle. Um, so guys, give me your three teams that are going to get relegated next season in the Premier League. Uh, I, I went with the, the three promoted teams. I don't, I don't think they got much to them. Um, Norwich just, they just sold Buendia to Aston Villa. I think that is a huge loss for them. Yeah. Actually, I think Buendia is their best player. Him, Cantwell, and, and Timo Pukki, those, three, those are their three. Um, I think Buendia is honestly the better of the three. He's the one that creates everything for them. He, I think he was the... He was the top assist there, and he created the most chances in the championship last season. Um, so them losing him is going to be huge. Um, Watford, I mean, you know, you look at their squad. There's not, there's not many players that you look at. You're like, oh, yeah, he's good. He's good. The only run really is maybe is- Ismail Asar. And even mm-hmm. last season, you look at his, he didn't do much at all. Um, and then Brentford is <laughs> is Brentford. You know? yeah, it's, I mean, I got it's the one that's a guarantee. There were, there were a few – you know, you always – you always think to yourself, maybe there's going to be that one Premier League team. You know, like we were just talking about Newcastle, maybe a Burnley, uh, maybe a Palace. You know, those teams could, you know, they're definitely going to be battling down there. But I think the three promoted teams just don't have anything. Right, there. yeah. Yeah. Ben, who you got? So I went with Brentford, obviously, because they just are terrible. And then building on what I just said with the transfer losers, I got Newcastle getting dead last in 20th. And then 18 was last. Burnley. But okay. I have I have Norwich and Watford both down there low. So we're all agreeing that the, the promoted teams aren't doing anything special. Right. Um, 
But yeah. I, I do think I haven't I can't remember a time when all three promoted teams got relegated the next season. So purely because of that, I didn't put all three of them down there, but I could definitely see that happening just on paper. Yeah, it is. It is like I I, I didn't I wasn't a big fan of putting all three of them in there because you know you always feel like there's it's just not gonna happen. Like there's gonna be that one team, but there's no team out of those three, there's no teams that excite you. Like last year you had Leeds, at least. Yeah, Leeds, yeah, yeah. Leeds we knew were gonna be good coming in last season. We knew they were getting relegated. Like absolutely. Right. But then this year, you look at all three of them, you're like, yeah, there's just nothing that excites me about these teams. Yeah, I also have all three going down um, with without a <laughs> without a sliver of hope for either one of these sides whatsoever. So, yeah, pretty on point with that one. I also do have Newcastle and Crystal Palace relatively low. Um, so let's go. Let's do. 11 to 17. I think that would probably be the easiest way to do this is 11 to 17. So if you guys want to start at 11, start at 17, I don't really care. Just go ahead and read me the picks. So, uh, I'll go first. Oh, okay. no, how do you got it? You got it. Okay. All right. So I'm looking at mine right now. Um, and I'm actually, I actually disagree with what I have down here right now. <laughs> um, I had, a, I had West Ham 11th and then Brighton 12th. I'm going to switch that. I'm going to put Brighton 11th, uh, West Ham 12th. Um, I'm going to go, Here's where it gets a little it's a little gray area for me because, you know, we were just talking about it. none of these teams have really done anything special in the transfer market. Um, so I have Brighton 11th, West Ham 12th, Southampton 13th, Palace 14th, Burnley 15th, Newcastle 16th. And then I, I actually have Wolves 17th. Um, really? I just shock one. I'm telling you, I, I I don't have faith. I used to I I love Wolves. I actually really like their team. They just lost Nuno as manager. They lost Ruben Tricio. Uh, Raul Jimenez just came back from his head injury. He just scored his first goal in preseason. I yeah. just, um, Juan wow, Martino is getting really old. Ruben Neves was being linked away a little bit. He's also getting old. Um, there's just not much in that team where I look at them and I get excited. I, you know, I mean, they have players like Connor, Connor Cody, Roman Sace, um, but there's just not much that excites me. I, Adama Troy is losing it. I don't think he's last. Yeah, he's he's, he's done. Well. I think Troy is beat. I, I think they're just losing their spark. Uh, I I think when they first got promoted, they were one of those teams like Leeds that excited you, and you're like, oh, they're going to be really good. I thought they were going to build on it, especially with Nuno. Nuno was a good manager, and then last season it was just eh. It was really just eh. And then they lost Nuno you know, as the manager. And I think I think the managers the, that's the biggest reason for me putting them that low. I think losing Nuno is going to be huge for them. Okay. Um, and then also Jimenez just coming back from that head injury. I don't see him being the same, but, you know, I, I would love them to prove me wrong, but that's just how I feel. I don't think to see much in that club anymore. All right, man. That's a surprise one. I actually have them relatively high compared yeah, I, to what you, compared I mean, to where you have them. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just I don't take. I, I, yeah, I have, I have West Ham 10th. Um, I have Wolves 11th. I, I, I did so. I, I, I Wolves at eleven. Yeah. Just don't put them top eight. I don't think they're gonna be. Yeah. Just don't put them top eight. <laughs> That's no. I, no. I won't put them top eight. No yeah. shot. Will I put them top eight? Yeah. I have Villa twelfth, Southampton thirteenth, Burnley fourteenth, Brighton fifteenth, Newcastle sixteenth, and I have Palace seventeenth. So, any thoughts on that? Like, how are we feeling about that? I don't really. It's it's really like tough to pick that. Like eleven to seventeen, yeah, it's really tough. Um, it's really yeah. tough. My my team, my sleeper team, there is Brighton. I I mean, we were just talking about this right be, right before we hopped on here. Brighton is my sleeper team. Um, they're known as the XG Kings. You know, the XG Kings. Yeah, it's what it is. The amount of chances that they create under Ethan Potter, or yeah, I, was, I almost said Harry Potter there. Under Ethan Potter is absolutely insane. I mean, they are a really creative attacking team, and they're still a solid defensive unit. I think last season, the only reason they finished as low as they did is because they didn't have that quality finisher up top. They had, like, Danny Welbeck up there. I mean, he's not he's – not Ball pay. He's washed. Paying them. So, yeah. I think I think Brighton are going to cash in on that XG this season. I think they're going to go high up the table. I put them as 11th. I'm actually <laughs> – I keep sitting here, and every single time I say it, I, I kind of put them up another position in my head. I Honestly, I'm looking at it now, and I'm like, I might put them ninth. Loving the XG Kings. Wow. Jesus. But, uh, Loving the XG Kings. I do. I, I like them a lot. <laughs> Their style of play is really good. Yeah. You know, especially as a Liverpool fan, when we would, I would watch um, us play against them, they were creating chances after chance. It's not like it was one of those teams that would sit back. Like these are guys that have, they have quality to them. So yeah, I want to play. That's my sleeper team for the season. I'll just tell you that right now. Brighton. Okay. All All right. Right. Do it. Go ahead, Ben. What you got? All right. Starting from eleven, I got Wolves eleven. 
I just disagree with the idea. I, I just don't think that they're going to be that bad. I think Jimenez coming back. I know he has a helmet on. It's like whatever Petr Cech had going on. It's funny looking. Yeah, it, it is funny looking. <laughs> hey, is a big part of the team as well, dude. I, I will say that. Yeah, Again, sure. there, there's not much thought going into these picks because they're all the same. So I got Wolves, West Ham, Crystal because they always finish 13th, 14th. So that's just a thing for Crystal. Brighton, Watford, Norwich, and then rounding out 17, seven. Uh, I have Southampton. So Southampton low. Yeah. Wow. I still thought it was a good manager. I respect it. And I, I heard, actually, I saw a thing recently that Danny Ings wanted to leave. I mean, yeah, he's been linked with a bunch of the big clubs, so I'm not really sure even if that's going to happen. But I, I don't think he could go to one of the big clubs and be that great, to be honest with you. He'd be a bench yeah. back option, that's it. But yeah, he'd be, be a good bench option for sure, but I don't think he could be a starter. One of those weird teams, dude. I It's either I have so much faith in them, I'm like, yeah, I'm putting them top 10, or I'm like, yeah, they're battling relegation. Right, yeah, yeah, same. Manager, you got players, Danny Ings, Vestergaard, Ward Prowse. Uh, I mean, you got players like that. There's no reason for them really not to not to be pushing, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Cause I, I remember the beginning of, I think it was last season, they were they were up there. They were in like top four for, you know. Correct, close. they were, yeah. And then the next thing you know, you know, come like April, and you're like looking at the table, you're like, what the hell happened to Southampton? And it's, I don't know. It's, I, it's just one of those teams you just have no idea what's going to happen. It's because War Prowse is like banging in free kicks every week. It yeah. was like, it was like a, like a six week span where every week he was scoring a free kick goal. It was ridiculous. I know. So they were up there for a while. Yeah, for sure. Heavily to Aston Villa now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all Did right. we all put Leeds top 10? Because I didn't hear any of us put Leeds. I have Leeds, I have Leeds top 10. Yeah. Cool. I have Leeds I, top I, 10. I, yeah. Did I'm we do, out. did we do 10 or no? Or did I we did 11 because I wanted to do top 10. All right, I did 10 too, but right. I'm going to go. Okay, so let's do seven. Let's do seven to 10 now. Let's do yeah. seven to 10. I'll go first. This is, is going to get interesting. I know. Yeah, gonna, it's, this, gonna, this is going to get weird. Okay, get so seven, I have the Gunners. I got Arsenal at seven. I got Everton at eight. I got Leeds nine. And then I already, I already said West Ham at 10. So I, I have enough faith in Arsenal that they'll – They'll get that seven, but I don't like top six whatsoever. So, so wait, you have Spurs top six? I have Spurs top six. That's a that's a terrible pick. I have Spurs top six. I think, I think Harry Kane can no carry them to top six. Okay. Harry Kane can carry them to top six. Listen, all right, I, I respect that. Um, I don't I, I don't have faith in Tottenham at all. I don't at all. I don't their manager. I don't even I off the top of my head, I don't even know who it's the Nuno. I don't know who Santos, it's, it's Nuno. It's Nuno. I, I I like Nuno, but I don't think he's gonna <laughs> I just don't think I don't rate Tom. They also look, I don't know if you guys this was like something that's gone completely under the radar. They just lost Toby Alderweire. I did yeah. see that, yeah. On a free, on a free transfer a free. to Qatar. Yeah. And, not, and they're getting and they're about to spend 50 million on uh what's his name from Mr. Romero. Romero from Atalanta. Yeah. Well they were linked with they were linked with Kunde for a while and then Kunde apparently rejected them. Yeah. Who wanna to go to Tottenham? It's because he's gonna go play for Chelsea now. It's just it's <laughs> <insane>. <laughs> I just don't – I'm, I'm all like oh, – I'm all aboard the Harry Kane train at that point. Like, if Harry Kane leaves, they're like a 15. Yeah, Dunn did just sign a new contract. Yeah, it's true. But I, I just don't know. Kane always gets his, his – his I think goal. Son's – I think Son's a purple patch player. I've, I've yeah. said it so many times. He's like a 10-week – he's a 10-week guy. We'll spat out 10 goals and five assists, and then he goes yeah. dead for the rest of the season. You don't hear about him, and then, you know, every once in a while he's yeah. back. It's like, oh, Son's the best player in the Prem. Nah, dude, he's a purple patch player. Exactly. Every single season. And he was so reliant on Kane. One once yeah. Kane got hurt, Son was dead the right. entire season. He looked so lazy the entire time at left wing. He didn't want to help. He wanted to do everything by himself, lost the ball, didn't track back. This guy so is. yeah. Guy. You had that little recent interaction <laughs> that one time. Yeah, I do. Um, We're killing this man's son today. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> That Everton eighth is that what you said? Everton eighth, yeah. I the, the only reason I have any faith in Everton doing anything is just because they have Rafa Benitez, Benitez now. Well, I like so, DCL a lot too, but yeah, DCL, big DCL guy, guy, yeah, and big it, Dom. All the, the all the cigarettes and stuff you hear about. That? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's done. I mean, he's not gonna play. Is he? All the like, stuff with the kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he's done. Yeah, he's beat. I, I, mean, I, I don't like Everton's team that much anymore. Um, they have to, Everton's always the team where you look at their team on paper and you're like, this is a good team. Yeah. Every single time I look at that, I'm like, this is a good team. And then 
I don't know what happens. And last season, they start off really well. And then, boom, out of nowhere, you're like, where the hell is everything? It's because James was, like, on fire for the first, like, three months yeah. of the season and then just disappeared. So he's still there. I think he's supposed to leave. Um, yeah, Rafa Benitez, that's the big thing for me. I, I think that's one of the best signings of the transfer window. Out of yeah, probably. Rafa yeah. Benitez. Uh, Everton, he is such a good manager. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, for sure. Lives, but yeah, I got I got them not eight, and then Leeds ninth. I think that's pretty solid for Leeds. Yeah. So I had so we said seventh through tenth. That we said seventh through ten. Yeah, so I'm gonna come out. You guys are you guys are probably gonna completely disagree with me here. This was my team that was back up to Leicester for my winners of the transfer window. I have Aston Villa seventh. Um, I they just signed <laughs> Buendia and Leon Bailey and Bailey. Yeah. Um, and they, I can't remember the, the name of that right back that they signed. Um, and then they're also being heavily linked to Ward's, Ward Prowse now. I think Aston Villa is a team that has quality in it. I, I think they're a really good team. If you look at their front four, um, they have, I mean, I'm going to assume Grealish is going to go to City. But they, I mean, if you look like Leon Bailey, Buendia, Ross Barkley, um, they just got rid of Al Mohamedy, but they have Trezeguet, uh, Sammy Watkins, or Ollie Watkins, sorry. Sammy, Sammy Watkins. Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie Watkins. I mean, that's a good attack. And then you also have Douglas Louise, um, John McGinn. If they sign Ward Prowse, they got Matty Cash. You know, I mean, I think it's a good team. Emmy Martinez. Yeah. I mean, I think it's yeah. a good team. I think it's a really good team. I think they're one or two signings away from competing for a Europa League spot. So that's why I have them seventh. Uh, I love Aston Villa, actually, personally. But so I have Aston Villa seventh, Tottenham eighth, Everton ninth, and Leeds tenth. So you have Arsenal top. Come on. Come on. He's got Arsenal it. top five. Oh. oh. oh top six, top six, top six. I don't know. I, I cannot touch Villa just because I'm so, like, I, I don't know what's going to happen with Grealish. My assumption is that he's gone. So yeah. I'm really like scared about them, and I, and I think if they lose Grealish, they're like in the mud. Like you, I don't a player like that, especially if you if you watch Aston Villa play, everything's it's different. all about Grealish. Everything yeah, but I you know the thing for me is that can either losing him can either help them grow. I mean, and it can you know allow these individual players to take over. You know, creative players like Buendia, um, Ross Barkley. I mean, you can you know maybe these guys are going to take over and you know, you know, put some balls in their pants and you know take over and be the creative spark in the team. Right. But, you know, or it could be like, damn, we just lost our main guy. Like, what are we going to do? You know, we're looking for inspiration or something. So if, you know, either way, you can look at it either way, but I, I just love Aston Villa. I love their team. So I have faith. I have faith. Okay. Okay. Got it. Benjamin, what you got, dude? All right. Ever since seven, Tottenham at eight, just cause I don't like Tottenham. Just felt like put him at eight. Uh, I got Villa at ninth cause of the Grealish thing. I think it's a safe pick. They could drop to 10, but they could jump up to eight, in my opinion, depending on the gorilla situation. Let's put them at ninth for now. And then Leeds 10. I think Leeds is good enough to break the top 10, but the top nine teams are just – I mean, the top eight teams are just better. Mm-hmm. Top nine, whatever. Is, is Rafinha. Rafinha's situation. Rafinha, yeah. yeah. I want him so bad, Liverpool. But if, if he leaves, I mean, that's – you know, that, that's a big player. He's really good. If, if they can keep, if they can manage to keep him, that's a really good player to keep. I mean, him, Bamford, you know, guys like that, that is big for them. Right. Yeah. He was linked with us for a really long time until we signed Sancho, obviously. But yeah, it's, it'd be huge for them. Yeah, for sure. God, dude, this Arsenal prop, I hate it so much. <laughs> so Arsenal back prop, I hate it. But yeah, then for me, top four was, well, I say second, third, and fourth was. So hard for me to pick. Yeah, but I'll let you guys. Uh, let's let's hear what you guys have to say before. I oh snap! It. Fabrizio just bombed it. Christian Romero's telling Atlanta, uh, Atlanta board tomorrow that he wants to join Tottenham. So that's gonna happen. Okay, so that is confirmed. Here we go. It's gonna happen. What's up? Okay. No, here, no, here we go. Just yet. No, here but, we go. But it's yeah, gonna about happen. Fifty million from Spurs and Daniel Levy does not spend. So yeah, he doesn't spend money for shit. Spurs, that means <laughs> there's not gonna be much money going sure. anywhere. Yeah. For sure. He's basically going to be an out-of-the-world replacement. So, mm-hmm. is he really going to make that much of a difference to the squad? Right. I'm pretty negative about Tottenham. I'll always be pretty negative. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a big Tottenham guy. Here's their trophy closet, guys. Oh, wait, it's nothing. It's not the nothing. It's not that. <laughs> All right, I want to, I want to hear you. All right, let's, let's go to the – let's go to the uh, – oh, my God. Let's go to the top six. Where one difference in – um, place like a United third and stuff. I'm not going first. I'm not going first. <laughs> I'll, go first. I'll, I'll go first. I'm gonna go from six up. Yeah, yeah, let's go six up. 
Arsenal six. I understand we're not better than five teams above us, yeah. but I think we're better than everyone else below us. All right, that's fine. Uh, Leicester we five, and I think yep. those are givens. This Arsenal, right. Leicester, six, top five. Excited here, yeah. <laughs> top four, top four, here we go. Chelsea at four. Okay, yeah. I think their Champions League season was good for them, but that's not how they're going to be the rest of the year. Yeah. Every single team sees this. When they get a new manager and they show some success, they have a blast for half a season, and then they die off. Always- Same thing happened with Ali. Ali had such a good start at Man U. It was great. It he was awesome. Like, it was finished like six. Games unbeaten. This does always happen. It was finished I, six. It, like, it whatever always whatever happens. Yeah, and I whatever think Liverpool play against a team with a new manager, I'm like, I'm like, they're gonna win because they just got their new manager. And yeah. then they, you got that hype train, dude. It's every single time. Right. Manager just sparks something. I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. So sorry, I had I got Liverpool three. All right, dude. And they didn't have a great transfer window, but I think that just coming back from injuries, they're going to really be back up to what they were two years ago. Uh, United two, City one. Okay. That's that's, that's, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I, yeah. I, I, all right. So I, I'll go, I, I'll go next. Yeah, go I'm ahead. First to six. I think City is – I think it's so obvious they're going to win it again. Um, the depth they have is absolutely – there's no one's competing with it. I mean, the fact that they're about to sign Grealish and they're still being linked to Harry Kane is – I think it's absolutely absurd. Um, I went, I mean, this might be some bias. I went Liverpool second because I have that little bit of faith that we're going to make the signings that we need to finish off. If we don't make the signings, I, I might, I might put us even third or fourth. I I'd really think that our owners are absolute idiots if they don't build. I mean, the fact that we finished third last season and everything that was happening just shows that we are literally a couple signings away from being second or even competing for the title still. So I don't know. Um, and that's what I was saying is the rest of the transfer window is kind of pivotal here. It's really important because United signing a defensive mid can change things. Us signing a well, you know, midfielder, back, a right back, and a forward um, can all change things. So I had City first, Liverpool second, United third, Chelsea fourth, Leicester fifth, Arsenal sixth. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised to see Leicester creep up and take over Chelsea. I, Chelsea's a weird one for me. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, they made I any- yeah, I don't. I honestly, I don't think Chelsea's that great. I've said, I've told you guys a bunch of times. I don't think they're that great. It's it, they're they're weird to me. Part of, like sometimes I'll think about them. I'm like Chelsea are really good. They're scary. And then other times I think about them. I'm like they're overrated. I'm like I don't think they're as good as people make them seem. But I don't know. I mean, they haven't made a single big signing this summer. Um, they're they're being heavily linked to Kunde now. Yeah. It's even, even when you look at their squad though, you're like, there isn't really any when we did the the video the other week when you guys gave me Chelsea, I was looking at it and I was like, they have good depth in every position, but the thing is there's no like stars really in that mm-hmm. team. There's not a single you you don't look at any of those players and you're like, damn, he's really good. Yeah. The only one that I can really think of is Conte. Yeah, Conte pretty much their own. Yeah, yeah. United have, you know, Pogba, Bruno, you know, Liverpool have Salah, Mane, Van Dijk, you know, City have obviously every single player in every single position. <laughs> and then you look at Chelsea and you're like, they have Conte, you know? So for me, I it's just a really weird team. Um, and like you said, I think they're they're riding off of that hype of the new manager. So I don't know if it's going to take them very far. Tuchel, you know, when you look at his past with like PSG and Dortmund, like he wasn't anything crazy, never did anything nuts with them. Yeah. I don't, you know, that's just how I feel. So the big thing for me is Liverpool or United. I think it's which one's going to be second, which one's going to be third, and whether they're going to be able to compete for a title, which I think is very dependent on the rest of this transfer window. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm going to, you know, kind of go off of what you were saying with the whole Chelsea thing. I've been saying it for a long time. I don't think Chelsea are that great. Um, I, I, they had a very easy run to winning a Champions League last season. Don't get me wrong. They great opponent in the final, but run, leading up to that, they played the weakest schedule out of any of the teams in the Champions yeah. League. They legit had the easiest draw every single time. And they were what? They were fourth in the Prem, right? And they're fourth in the Prem or third in the Prem. They got they got third. Fourth. That was the case with Leicester, no, who almost dropped out of champ- who did drop out of Champions League. No, Liverpool. Liverpool finished third. Chelsea yeah, third. Liverpool finished third. And, yeah, and that and Chelsea got fourth. A big thing. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, Chelsea had absolutely. Besides the fact that they were focused on the Champions League, they didn't have any reason to be finishing below. Liverpool. No, yeah. I, in the state that Liverpool were in, there is absolutely no reason for Chelsea to have been finishing below us. Leicester as well. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. but Chelsea, I mean. So if they're folding in, you know, little situations like that, then, you know, how are they going to do over the course of a 38-game season? 
I mean, yeah, I don't think they're going to do it again. Williams and Matt Phillips at the back. I mean, right. And we dropped plenty of points. I mean, mm. there, there was opportunity for Chelsea to capitalize, and they should have been third. They should have had third guaranteed. I thought, I thought they had third guaranteed. So I don't know. I don't have much faith in them. All right. So let me get into it. Okay. So I have Spurs six. I already talked about that. I have Leicester five. Okay. With the potential to sneak into that four. Um, I have, I have Chelsea fourth. I have Chelsea fourth. I think, you know, Leicester and Chelsea can swap out. You know what I mean? Whatever happens. Uh, I have Liverpool third. Um, yeah, I got Liverpool third. Uh, this, this is why I wanted to go last because if they don't sign Jack Grealish, I have Manchester United winning the whole thing. So, and throw it up, come at me right now. I don't care. Ben, you said it a week ago that you, I know I did. The league. But I think they got it this year. I think it's time. I think if they don't do something this year, I think Ali's got to go because you cannot bring a guy in like Sancho and Varane to complete that defense and get that right winger that you've been looking at for so long. And if, if City signed Grealish, City are winning the league. I'm not like, I'm not deluded. That's 100% going to happen. But I have a little bit of faith that this squad could go out and win a league next season. But, all right, let me ask you that. Do you think Grealish makes that big of a difference to City? Do you think signing Grealish is? I think Grealish is. I think Grealish is a, an upgrade on. Son. I think Grealish will be better for them than a Mares or a Sterling. I think if you put Grealish on either wing or even in the middle, like you have, then you have Foden, De Bruyne, and Grealish, who are three of the best creators in the league. I, and that's, but that's yeah. my that's my main thing with City is you look at that team and you're like, what does Grealish bring to them that they don't already have? You have right. Foden, he's such a similar player to Foden, Bernardo, mm-hmm. and um, his third one and Mares. I think that he's he's so similar to those three players. I, I think that when I look at City's team, I say they need a left back and a striker, and then their their squad is completely finished. They That's need it. a striker so bad. But they've been playing Cancelo over on the left, so, like, I don't think it's that They're, big of a yeah, deal to have a left back. Not as big a need. Left right. back very important. I think, stri- I think you sign a striker, and then, you know, Fernandinho can still can still be a backup defensive mid. But I think that'll be next season. The backup defensive mid will be their priority. But that's it. I, I really think – they're a striker away from having the complete squad. I mean, one hundred percent the complete squad. I know a lot of City fans like Jesus on the wing, so I don't even think he would end up being the backup striker. But they're, I think they're literally a striker away. I don't think Grealish makes that big of a difference to their team. Obviously, he's really good, good signing. You know, you you love to have him, but I don't think. I mean, you already have Maris, Bernardo, and Foden. I don't think he makes that big a difference to that team. I and, feel like if you bring Grealish in, you have to see somebody go. Like, and I just I, feel like there's I, a lot. Yeah. And I think it's I think Bernardo's gonna be the one to go. I've yeah. seen of him away, but I, I just don't see Grealish making that big I think that's the last yeah. signing in that team. I honestly think I don't think he makes that much of a difference either, especially the price tag that Aston Villa is gonna want. Who would their striker even be? Who is City's so I would, striker? I want to talk on this. I think that Pep should go back to what he did with Barcelona and play that four three three false nine. And throw Foden at that number nine. Spot. Well, that's what they did for a bunch of time last year. They actually put De Bruyne there for a lot of it. Yeah, you know, false nine a lot when he was doing well. I mean, yeah, yeah. And that's my thing is, dude. I I really think I think City can sit in this transfer window, you know, sit on their couch, watch everybody else make as many signings as they want, and I think they'll still be comfortable that they're going to win the league next season. Mm-hmm. That I mean, that squad is absolutely insane. The only reason they didn't finish with the points that they that you would have thought, you know, they weren't in the night, like the high nineties from the seasons before was because they had that really bad start to the season. Mm-hmm. And that was when Ruben Diaz wasn't even integrated into the squad. As soon as in- Ruben Diaz got integrated in the squad, they were, boom, they were. Oh yeah. They were great. Far. Yeah. Him and yeah, Stones were electric. Last season. I think it's just undisputed that they're, they're going to win the league unless I, I, I still don't think United have enough in them to really push them. I, once, maybe if they sign that defensive mid, I think United will be able to push them. And then Liverpool, same thing. I think if Liverpool make the signings, then I think Liverpool is definitely capable of pushing them. Mm. Van Dyke coming, I mean, Van Dyke, is, I love him. <laughs> I think he yeah, Van Dyke's great. I think Van Dyke is going to make an absolutely huge difference if he can get back to his form, which is you know to be seen. But I, I just don't, I don't see anyone catching up to City. I think, yeah. I think City can sit there pretty and not make a single signing, and they'll still walk the league. Mm-hmm. I don't well, know, I man. Thinking, I'm here for it. No, I want something interesting, but I I, I, <laughs> I want it so bad, dude. Oh my god, that'd be I great. Just, I I think next season has the potential to be like a really. Oh, it's going to be amazing next season I mean, for sitting, sure. We don't 
<laughs> half the time we're, we're talking here and we're like, we don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think this, this season is going to be a good one. Champions League too is going to be good. I, I'm excited. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've got PSG. PSG are huge. Bayern mm-hmm. obviously really good. Um, Barca have made a couple signings. I think the Premier League clubs are really going to be in play in this year's Champions League as well. Yeah. I feel like as far as – like I don't – like, I don't think Barca – like, I don't understand Barca whatsoever. Like, I'm looking at them yesterday, and I'm like, you bring in Depay and Aguirre. Like, I, like, why? I don't really understand it. Like, why you, – you're not filling out any of the needs whatsoever that you need. You just use Griezmann. It brought in two forwards, but you yeah, already have Griezmann. Griezmann. You already have Messi. <laughs> why did you need to bring in these two guys? I just – I don't really understand it. Never, never I think one is for depth, because you can play Depay at left wing anyways. That's yeah, not going to be that. Yeah. And then – and then I think Griezmann was – I don't know what's going to happen with that, but he was heavily linked back to Atleti. Um, yeah, it was a – there's like a swap good. thing with Saul. Oh. He's not good yeah. for Barca either. He completely lost all of his momentum after mm. he stopped doing his yeah, – But he's still yeah. not – he did well for Barca. He's still not Atletico Griezmann yet. No. no. And they need not a close. They need a set. I, I have some friends that are Barca fans, and they always try to argue. They're like, yeah, no, nah, we're fine. Like, we, we're we doing well. And I'm like, all right, you guys. And, and it's not even just about their players. <laughs> their financial situation. It's I'm awful. Like, oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. They're close to bankrupt. <laughs> like, yeah. these guys, like, they might even end up getting relegated just based off a of financial situation. I mean, like, we, I think we've seen it happen. I think – I can't remember. It might have been Portsmouth back in the day. They got, rele- they got relegated literally because they didn't have any money. Yeah. Um, I think it happened to Juventus a long time ago. Stuff like that. I mean, dude, <laughs> you can't just have crap finances. I mean, you think about it. I mean, it's a football club, but it's also it's a business. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, whatever. But I, I think they they have potential. I, I think I still think Barca is a decent team. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's, I think Champions League is going to be really interesting because I don't think Real Madrid are going to be anywhere near. Think what they once were either so i feel like the spanish clubs aren't really going to be in play as much and i think it's going to be really Premier League heavy this season it's going to be city and psg obvious favorites mm-hmm. be up there um and then liverpool united chelsea those three we'll see we'll see i mean i again the, united and liverpool they're it's so big on signings united is literally just a defense I mean, you guys just need that yeah. defense. Your, your squad is good mm-hmm. need that back up right back like a trippier but Liverpool need some a lot of signings if we really want to be that big. So mm-hmm. Champions League is going to be interesting. Premier League is going to be, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Nice, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Two weeks, two weeks. Two weeks. I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited. Again, two weeks left to make transfers, and yeah, here right. I am. I don't know who Liverpool signing, but you know what? Yeah, Ben. Gunu's had the first game. Arsenal is just Friday night. Gunu's had the first game. Yeah, We're opening the season off. Rugby, <laughs> it's a dead club. I think club. we play Brighton too, which is going to be a funny game. That is funny. Right, I feel like Brighton's your poison. Oh man. wait, no, never mind. We play Brentford. <laughs> oh, Brentford, yeah. If you don't win, I would be really ashamed. Oh, Imagine Arsenal lose first game against too. Brentford. Start off your disappointing. Season. <laughs> I, this flag's going. This shirt's going. Uh, I'm... United have a big game right off. The... No, you guys play Leeds. Leeds, Leeds, yeah, Leeds we first right game. Off. That's yeah, but Leeds first game. I think your your start to your schedule is big. I think it's it's I, rough. Yeah, it's really rough. I know Chelsea has a rough start. Liverpool, I got a really good, we have a really good start. I mean, it's I can't wait, dude. I don't know. We'll see. I'm really excited to see Ralph and Varane. Yeah, That's a big thing to look forward to. Oh my yeah, God. I know. Yeah. Um, while we're on the fixtures, I have the fixtures up right now. I kind of want to talk about two of these. Uh, so Saturday, August 14th, biggest game for me that day. I think is Burnley Brighton. That could be a good game. I mean, what do you call big? <laughs> not big teams. Not big. You teams. call big. I, not big teams at all. Trust me. That, those, those games are big teams. Um, the other, the other games. Man, you play Leeds. We, we just talk about that. I that's the biggest Brighton. game right there. <laughs> yeah. And no. Okay. If you want to talk team wise, I think that's the biggest game. Burnley Brighton but, um, is not. <laughs> I, I'm interested in the Burnley Brighton game. All right, dude. You watch that. <laughs> right, I'll watch that game. <laughs> And then Saturday, the big – I mean, Sunday, the big one, Tottenham City. If that's the – Okay, right? yeah, that's a big game. There's a big that, game. That's a big game. Yeah. <laughs> but I think City are going to absolutely crap on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would love to see that game be 4 nothing City and just completely crush all of Tottenham spirits. It's really the first game of the year. I would love Spurs to pull off an upset off the jump. And then I, I think City are a team – where mentally, they're, I don't think they're strong mentally. So no. I, if they get off to a bad start, I think City 
could, I mean, low key, I think they could ruin their entire season if they get off to a bad start. Correct. I think yeah. that's a team that's not, who's, the, who's their captain right now? I think, I think it's De Bruyne. It was Fernandinho when Fernandinho to, plays, but Fernandinho. I'm not even sure. It's not Fernandinho, it's De Bruyne. And I think if it's not De Bruyne, it's Sterling. You tell me those are good. Ah, no. It is. Who else? I'm I'm not saying yeah. I'm not saying De Bruyne or Sterling is a good captain. I'm saying they're both not good captains. That's what I'm saying. I rate it's Stones not. as a captain. I rate Stones as a captain. I do as well. Or Diaz even. Nah, I think I think uh, for for a yeah. team like City, they need to be English or at least yeah, an English, true. a good I mean, English speaking person. Yeah, but dude, I I just I don't see any leaders in that team since they lost company. They don't have leaders. Mm-mm. Diaz, they've said that Diaz is a leader. You know, I don't I don't know too well. Obviously, there's stuff that goes on. But when you compare it. To like, I, I don't want to be that guy, but like a Liverpool, you got Jordan Henderson. I think he's the best, like such a good leader. I think he's the best captain. He's, in the league. he's yeah, he's the best, the best captain, captain in the league for sure. And then you have the backup of him is James Milner, and then the backup of the James Milner is Van Dyke. I mean, so when you turn, you think mentally, like we're just talking, we're looking at the teams and we're saying, oh, what players are good, what players aren't good, but there's that mental aspect that comes into play for sure. Yeah. And when you look at a team like Liverpool, they they have the leaders, and then City. I mean, City can fall apart easy. I think United have good leaders. I think I think Maguire and Bruno are good. Leaders. I don't. I don't think Maguire is a good leader. I think Bruno's a great leader. I think Bruno's a good leader. I think Maguire's not anything crazy. You know, he's he's not he's not Bruno. He's not Henderson. But nah, he's, yeah. He's, 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 he's stepped up ever good. since he's got gotten the captaincy. Yeah. Is what I will say. Good. good, and that's it. Slabheads. I think Slabheads turned up. Especially All right, we didn't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't need to do that. I that was I kind of disrespectful. Oh, I mean, he's definitely turned up. He's great in the Euros, you know. Yeah, so we'll Why you got 50 mil sitting on the bench and Ben White, but, you know, if we're taking shots, that works. Yeah, and then, I mean, like, Chelsea have Aspilicueta, who's a really good leader. Um, actually, that's about it, probably in that team. Thiago Silva. So, I mean, yeah. you know, they, these you do need leaders in the team. And I think if City can get off to a bad start, I think that'll be huge for, you know, me and you, you know, Liverpool and United. I right. Think for us. So we'll see, dude. I'm again. This is exactly my point. Everything we come up with like one little thing, and then it comes. Oh, what if this happens? Because we're right, really yeah, unpredictable. <laughs> I lay. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm excited. So we got two weeks. Two weeks till we kick off. That's yeah. It's literally two weeks from today when we're recording this. We're recording this on August first. So the first game's on August fourteenth, I think. Thirteenth. Right. The Gooners. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Arsenal no, August, up on Friday. So come August, on. So August thirteenth. So the fellas, that is gonna be. It for the first edition of the Soccer Podcast on the Sam Sports Talk channel. Guys, thanks for tuning in. We will see you guys next week.